What happens when you combine the soulful grooves of funk, the ethereal sounds of shoegaze, and the hypnotic rhythms of traditional music from faraway places? Over the last decade, there's one band that has cracked the code and created a sound that's all their own to critical and commercial acclaim. But what's the secret sauce that makes it all work, and is it possible for me to recreate that sound? Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm trying out a new video series called Off Brand, where I do my best to break down the formula behind the writing, performances, and production of iconic artists. I then try to create my own off-brand version of that artist's music in a brand new song that I create for each video. This is episode one, and today I'm gonna to be tackling Krungbin. Krungbin is known for their unique blend of musical styles, which includes elements of psychedelic rock, funk, soul, and surf music, as well as traditional music from various parts of the world, such as Thailand, Iran, and Spain. Additionally, Krungbin is recognized for their live performances, which are often characterized by improvisation and extended instrumental jams. The band's distinctive sound and eclectic influences have earned them a dedicated following and critical acclaim in the music industry. So what's the secret? Let's find out. In order to get more of a sense of what's going on in different Krungbin songs, I put together a Spotify playlist that I could reference and kind of check some songs out from different eras. The structure of these songs I found really interesting. There's less of a verse chorus vibe and more of like an AB sort of thing. A lot of songs have just a, a couple simple chord changes that they switch between and stay on for different periods of time. Um, but it's hard for me to say that this is a chorus and this is a verse. It's easier to say that this is one section and this is another section. Some interesting things to note, a lot of songs tend to repeat four bars at a time, eight bars at a time, 16 bars at a time. A lot of Krungbin stuff kind of differs from that and it'll have like a, a six bar sequence. So if you look at White Gloves, for instance, uh, it's got a G minor for two bars, C for two bars, and D minor for two bars thing. And that kind of repeats throughout the entire song. So it's a, a six bar phrase that you just hear over and over again. It's amazing when a song has that repetitive nature, but it still has this great replayability factor where I can listen to this song over and over again and kind of find something new every time I listen. I thought the song Time You and I in particular had a unique structure. You can hear in it just the way that the, the bass is active and it's playing off of the guitar and the drums that are sticking to this sort of steady rhythm. They make use of jazz voicings pretty heavily in their chords. A lot of the chords are actually pretty simple, but they'll throw just enough in to create this nice tension in their songs that when it resolves, sounds really good. A good chunk of Krungbin songs, I think over half, uh, don't have lyrics. Outside of a few select tracks though, even when there are vocals, they're kind of in the background. Krungbin doesn't like to be put in a box in terms of their style. They're putting together ideas from a lot of different styles into one thing that makes it uniquely their own, but clearly a blend of their influences. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on on the guitar. So I thought I had a pretty good sense of what was going on with the gear, but it turns out I was totally wrong about one thing and it blew my mind. So Stratocasters have a pickup selection switch, which has five options that correspond to which pickups are picking up the tone of the guitar. They're labeled one, two, three, four, five. If you pick one, you use this pickup, which is a twangy tone. If you pick five, you use this pickup, which is a much rounder tone. Listening to their music, it sounds like a really twangy guitar sound, so I thought they were using the first pickup. Here's how I thought he was doing it. So like I said, I'm using the first pickup. And then on my pedal board, here's what I'm doing. Well, I'm using a little bit of overdrive. I'm using a compressor. I'm using a chorus effect, and I'm using reverb. It turns out he's typically using third, fourth, or fifth position, which is the rounder tone. So how does he get that twangy sound? He's actually getting that twang sound using a wah pedal. The way that a wah pedal works is you have to click it on to get the effect. So right now, I'm moving my foot up and down, but I'm not getting the wah sound. If I then click it on, I get that wah sound. Most guitar players keep it off most of the time, and then if they wanna use it, they click it on and make the sound. It turns out Mark leaves his on all the time. So the twangy sound, despite using that round pickup, comes from the wah pedal. Once 
One of the other things that really surprised me was what he's doing to get the overdrive sound he gets. So I have two different pedals I use for overdrive and distortion. This one on the right here, I typically use for like more subtle overdrives. This one on the left is a Boss DS1 distortion pedal, which often gives like a pretty extreme sound. It turns out he uses this same DS1 pedal and keeps the tone and distortion pedals all the way to the left. I think he also keeps the volume knob on his guitar down a little bit to limit the input gain. So let's hear how that sounds. Let's take a look at some of the techniques and chords that you got to do on guitar if you want to create that sound. First two things you got to do, hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's a huge part of pretty much every Krungbin song. He does little lines like this, and that's pretty much all just hammer-ons, pull-offs, a little bit of slide. Next up, double stops. A double stop is when you hit two strings at the same time to create an effect, but it's not really like a chord. He often uses double stops alongside hammer-ons and pull-offs. Another thing he really likes to do is play notes repeatedly to create sort of that surf rock sound. For the bass sound, Laura Lee plays a vintage Fender Jazz bass. Even though my Fender Jazz bass looks a lot closer to what she's using, the sound is somewhere between what I have on this Hofner and what I have on my Fender. A lot of the time you'll notice two of the instrumentalists are playing something pretty consistent and then one of them is doing something a bit different. Usually the drums are consistent and oftentimes the bass is, but sometimes the guitar can be the thing that's consistent and when that happens, Laura Lee often does a lot more on bass. The rhythms tend to be kind of funky, they're short, they're groovy. It's really important for any bass part, but especially for Krungvin, that the bass notes are really tight. So not only you're starting at the right point, but you're cutting off very abruptly and at the right points. Donald DJ Johnson is the drummer for Krungbin. He's got this very soft style. It took a lot of effort for me to like recreate the sound of the drum set. Much like the way the guitar is played, it's so soft that the intricacies are really important. If you don't get them, it sounds nothing like it. It's very hard to approximate on an SPDSX. Now, like obviously, any sort of sample pad is gonna be a bit incomplete compared to a drum set. Um, but especially for this style of music, it's difficult. For the snare, we have this sort of sound. Got a kick that's got a lot of that bass, um, shaved off a bit of the, the high end of it. The toms kinda, they don't ring out a ton, but they do have a little bit of ring to them. Ride, which doesn't get used a whole lot. Um, here's the normal crash that I have for this kit. The key to playing this style is just keeping everything uh, very consistent, very tight, but also very light. It's, it's hard to even create the, the right level of lightness for the snare using this kit. So one thing that I noticed with a lot of Krungbin tracks, and this is pretty common in a lot of like modern music, is that he's often staying on the hi-hat and not switching over to the ride for something like a chorus. They're still often like achieving that effect though by having additional auxiliary percussion come in. And a big part of at least the recorded sound of Krungbin is auxiliary percussion. It seems like they have like congas, bongos, shaker, um, triangle, or tambourine on just about every track. So locking in, 
with the drum set and the bass is that auxiliary percussion sound. So I can do my best to recreate that sound with the bongos I have, the aux percussion I have, and then I can use my sample pad to try to recreate anything else uh, that I don't have here too. The production style of Krungbin varies a bit from album to album. For instance, if you listen to The Universe Smiles Upon You versus Mordecai, you'll notice that on Mordecai things are a bit more dry. The drums particularly feel a lot more up front and they're kind of on top of the mix. And in The Universe Smiles Upon You, the drums sound a lot roomier along with everything else. There's a real punchiness to the bass and the drums in Krungbin's work, but it comes with a certain softness that you don't always hear. For instance, if you compare them to Wolfpack, Wolfpack also has that punchy bass and drum sound, but it doesn't have the same smoothness and reverb that Krungbin has that gives it a softer sound. The production also blends in a lot with the instruments, and I get the sense that the instrument players think a lot about production when they play. So in some ways it feels like the production isn't actually doing that much, it's letting the instruments lead the way and doing little things to add to that. It's at the production layer that you start to think about these additional instruments that come in. So we already talked a little bit about auxiliary percussion, but beyond that, sometimes you have additional guitars and just little background sounds that come in that, that kind of add to everything. They make use of additional samples, particularly atmospheric samples, that really add to the sound and the lo-fi quality of everything. So if you listen to White Gloves, you'll notice that there's rain at the beginning that kind of puts everything in a certain space. It's sort of this like little ear candy that you hear up top, almost like an ASMR thing that really puts you in the right mood when you listen to the song and it blends in perfectly with what the instruments are doing. Okay, so using just a basic metronome app on my phone and tapping to figure out the tempo, um, I went through the songs on my Spotify playlist of Krungbin's songs. On the whole, the BPMs ranged from like 60 to 70 on the lower side to around 110 for like the higher end tempos. All right, so I was watching an interview with Krungbin and they talked about the process they use when they start writing a song. So Laura Lee gets some sort of a drum loop and she starts playing something against that. And then she eventually sends that to Mark Spear. Um, and then the group kind of hops on it all together. So I'm gonna do something similar. They use Ableton, I'm gonna use Ableton also. And then I'm gonna use all the elements of what do I get out of the songs I've listened to, combine it with sort of that mentality and then see what I can build. So I just went on YouTube and looked for a couple drum beats that were sort of the vibe that I was looking for. We got this one at 80. We have this loop that's at 100. This loop at 70. And then we have this one at 110. Let's come up with some ideas over the 80. So now I'm going to try the 100 BPM section. I didn't love that idea, but we'll listen to it later. Let's do the 70 BPM. All right, I like those ideas. Let's do over 110. So there's a bunch of ideas with bass and a beat. Let's see where we can go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of do the second part in the writing process now. I'm gonna start with just kind of jamming some things out and then um, then we'll try to see if we can make some structure out of out of some ideas.
All right. Well, I've been working on this for a bit now, and I think I've got a good idea for a song, but I just wanted to say it's kind of hard to do. It's a little hard because all of these songs are so minimalist, but they still have to have like a hook and a melody. And I think that's something you really need to do if you're going to do Krungbin. You want to have that like pop sensibility and melodies that stick with you, but in a very subtle sort of way. Okay, so at this point, I'm nearly done with the song, and I want to show you a little bit of what I've got going on in my Ableton session before I show you the song. Let's check it out. So first of all, the drums. Krungbin doesn't actually record to a metronome. I used a metronome when I recorded, but I tried to keep things a little bit loose, where like normally I would clean things up after the fact so things were really close to being right on the beat. Um, and here I was just a little bit more loose about that. I ended up using the jazz bass instead of the Hofner. At the end of the day, I thought it was just a little bit closer and it also just looked better. It took me a while though to take what I recorded and kind of adapt it to make it sound just right because without a little bit of processing, it just wasn't quite the right bass sound. For the guitar, I just did a little bit of simple EQing and then I put it into a jazz chorus style amp um, and turned up the chorus a bit beyond what I was getting from my pedal board. I added a lot of auxiliary percussion, so I have bongos in here, uh, shaker, and tambourine. I added a lot of vocals, but they're pretty much just doing oohs, ahs, and nahs. So this fits with a lot of Krungbin songs that don't really have lyrics, but have a little bit of vocal, uh, almost like vocal accompaniment. I also added in a steel guitar, which gave it a little more depth, and I thought that was kind of consistent with the way that they add in additional guitars in their productions of their songs. And then lastly, I added a little bit of ambiance. So it's got kind of a wind sound going in the background and I kind of automate that in and out. To finish things off, I used AI to create album artwork that looked fairly similar to Krungbin stuff. I also went on Amazon and got myself a nice black wig so I could recreate the look of Krungbin for my videos. All right, y'all, enough of me yapping. This is off-brand Krungbin.
Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. If you like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, if there's another artist that you'd love to see me cover, uh, please leave a comment. If a lot of you say the same thing and I have some concept of how I would approach that artist, I'll definitely do a video on it.